Hey guys, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to talk to you about buying and configuring our next dive boat in the U.S. and shipping it to the islands, in this case, Bonaire. We will share with you our recent experience from start to finish, should you wish to take on this lofty endeavor. Just having first-hand experience on doing this, I would say if you can buy locally, do it. Buying a boat in the U.S., prepping it, and shipping it to the islands is a nightmare, especially a used boat. The challenges and costs that await you are significant. Even if Bonaire is not your island, the destination, for the most part, most of the issues and how I would deal with them are the same. Let's discuss the pros and cons of buying a boat locally on an island. The pros are short, but significant. If you buy a boat locally, you don't have to wait for it. You don't have to pay shipping costs or deal with shipping issues. You don't have to pay import duties. The negatives are considerable. First, you have few options to choose from. I have found it rare that people on an island take proper care of a boat. The reasons are numerous. If you need to make repairs, it takes longer to get parts. If you buy the boat outside, you can acquire them quicker and they will be less expensive. Getting parts may require you to pay import duties if someone does not bring them in their, down in their luggage. Resources are limited on an island and the boat you buy probably has been worked on by a variety of people. Many of whom have oversold their skills, other their customers were not willing to pay to do the job correctly or they did not want to tell you the bad news and it wasn't done correctly. Often when you look under the hood at things like wiring, you may find a real mess. Also, the sea environment in the Caribbean is tough on a boat. Sun, high salt levels are not your friend. Now let's discuss the pros and cons of buying a boat in the U.S. and importing it. So the pros, more boats to choose from, obviously. Easier to get parts. You have access to more skilled people to work on the boat. People who can survey the boat do a much more thorough job of surveying the boat for purchase. The negatives, if you're going to find a boat, you will need to pay for hotels, car rentals, and so on to find a boat. This is a hidden cost people do not think about. You have to deal with used or new boat dealers. They are worse than car dealers. You have to have the boat prepped for shipping. Shipping includes shipping on U.S. roads, so there are costs and restrictions associated with this. Shipping costs are crazy high right now and growing. Surveying costs can be higher than on an island. It is highly likely you will need to buy a new trailer due to the limited supply resulting from COVID. The good thing is you all get the benefit of our experience of buying our newer boat and shipping it to Bonaire. We will take you through it. So what motivated us to buy a boat in the U.S.? First, our boat, the Honey Bee 2, is a great boat. You can safely use the boat to dive all up and down the west coast of Bonaire and climb Bonaire as well. We spent the money to really upgrade her, repainted her, put new sea deck on, new batteries, underwater light, custom dive ladder, and so on. Basically, it is a dive-ready boat. However, like all boats, once you have one, you want to explore more. We want to go and dive and film in places like Aruba and Curaçao. We would like to take her on East Coast drift dives to see places that most don't. Even though our engine is 300 horsepower on the Honey Bee, we only have one engine. You need a boat with two engines that has separate fuel tanks to go to these places as fuel on the island can be dirty and have water in it. We wanted to have more deck space, a head, a larger roof for protection on longer crossings, and also a boat that could give us a smoother rise on the seas between Bonaire and Curaçao. We wanted a catamaran style boat which would afford this. This had all been a dream because the costs were crazy high and the boats available were very limited. We were fortunate that we had a large lot in Bonaire that we had owned since 2006 that we recently sold that allowed us to make this dream become a reality. Let's talk about finding a boat. There are a number of vehicles for finding a boat uh, to your liking. I use Boat Trader. There are others. 
Hindsight being 2020, it might have been easier uh, to work with a boat broker who could deal with all the problems involved with buying and preparing a boat for transport. But if we did that, then we wouldn't be able to share all of these wonderful experiences and hurdles of buying a boat and getting it to the island. The costs would also be much higher. We were looking for a WorldCat 290DC, which means dual console. The reasons are as follows. Two engines for redundancy and power. Second, individual gas tanks for each engine. Fuel on the island is often dirty or it has water in it. If one engine stops due to bad fuel, you have a second. Catamarans can take the waves and they are very much more stable in rolling seas. We wanted to go to other islands. It has great deck space for diving, as well as a comfortable area to sit. The WorldCat has a great dive ladder that's in the center of the boat stern between the two engines, so there is less rocking and rolling when you get in and out of the water. It had a large covered center section and a bimini over the front to keep out of the sun. It has a head. It has a windlass for anchoring in places like Curacao. It is great on fuel consumption. It can move fast on the water in an emergency. Worldcats are well-built solid boats. You get more overall deck space on a catamaran style boat. They usually come with uh, Yamaha engines, which can be serviced in Bonaire. Access to things like power steering and fuel filters are easily accessible from the deck. You don't have to climb into the hold. We like this particular model as the next later model was a 295 DC, which was much more money. Also, the next step up for WorldCat was a 320 DC. Although it afforded more room and comforts, it also chewed up more deck space. We want it for diving. This is sacrilege. It was also considerably more expensive. We began our search. This is where the challenges start. We chose Florida as the place to buy the boat due to the vicinity to Port Everglades, where we would ship the boat from. And because Florida has one of the largest boating communities in the world. It is also only a two and a half hour flight from Bonaire to Miami. However, due to COVID, the used boat market was limited as boating was one of the few ways you could go out and enjoy yourself without being in contact with people you don't know. The other challenge would be finding a trailer. There were no used tra boat trailers to be had and we looked all the way up to Alabama and Georgia. Nothing. We had to have one built. Cha-ching! We narrowed our search to two boats. One was in Tavernier, Florida and the other was in Sarasota. The Tavernier boat had 400 hours on the engines and was a 2014 boat. It also had a tower. The Sarasota boat had 300 engine hours, uh, basically one year boating on Bonaire and was a 2017, three years newer. However, it was $60,000 more. Yet boats built in 2015 and after got up on plane faster. We viewed this as a marketing ploy. What it really says is, we took our weight out of the boat to reduce costs as the hull was thinner. Also, the 2014 just had a price drop, so we knew it had been on the market for a while. For $60,000 less, if the boat in Tavernier was in great shape, this was the right decision. Our Bonaire neighbors, Jason and Tina Bradley, happened to be living in Tavernier part of the year at the time. We had Jason go to the boat and walk through it on video. Jason also owns a Glacier Bay powered catamaran. We concluded this boat looked amazing. It even had places for four scuba tanks behind each of the engines, which is a great start, but we would need to be able to store more. The tower had an operational helm, which means we could more easily spot fish action on the surface so that we could drop divers into the water to do filming. The boat was 20 years newer than the Honeybee. It would need upgrades, however, as it had a transom-mounted transducer, and we prefer a through-hull transducer in the Caribbean. They are more durable and more powerful. Also, to get a new transducer, you need to upgrade your chart plotter to work with it. The negative part of having two helms is you really need two chart plotters. If you like the boat, make an offer contingent on a marine survey and your final inspection. Typically, the dealer will want 10% down on the boat. We did this. If the dealer accepts your offer, get a licensed and insured surveyor that will travel to the seller. 
Most boat yards will want the surveyor to be insured and to show proof of insurance to the boat yard. Make sure that the seller will keep the boat on the lot until all the work that they need to do is done. If you are shipping to another country, you will need to pay import duties. Make sure any purchase excludes state taxes that is being purchased for export. Your next step is to get a surveyor. You need to make sure that the engines and the hull are in great shape and you need to find out where all the problems are. Finding a surveyor is a challenge as many went out of business during COVID. In fact, many of the websites that we went to were no longer operational. Also, insurance companies require someone accredited by the Society of Accredited Marine Surveyors, or SAMS. These people are all booked up. What we found is that if you are going to ship your boat abroad, the insurance companies did not care as long as they knew the surveyor. Veneer insurance companies could care less about the certification. The person we found was someone highly recommended by a SAMS certified professional who was an engine and boat survey expert. He was not a hull expert, but knew enough to do the job. His name was A.J. Manzanilla, and he was a godsend with far more skills than just a boat survey. This would prove critical down the road. A.J. agreed to go and survey the boat, which cost us about $1,200. Others in Miami and Florida and the Florida Keys charged $1,800. It was worth every penny. When you look at the cost of shipping a boat to the islands, you better make sure the boat is sound. A.J. went to do the survey. The boat had two t Yamaha 250 horsepower outboard engines, the Yamaha software will tell you everything you need to know about the engine. This is likely with other engine manufacturers. You also want an engine oil analysis to make sure there are not any serious problems. You would also do a sea trial. This is the oil report from the port engine, which states basically normal for the break-in overhaul period. Sample analysis appears free of external contamination. The same for the right engine. The Yamaha software also confirmed that the engines only had 400 hours on the engine and had almost never been run over 2,000 RPMs. Regardless of what a seller will tell you, the engine data does not lie. Never depend on the seller's word. Engines check. If you're going to bring a boat over to the islands, make sure they have low hours. If not, you should replace them in the US or sell them and repower the boat on the island. Make sure the engines are designed specifically for Caribbean salt water. Definitely no fresh water engines. The salt content in the Caribbean is crazy high. You end up replacing them or worse, get caught with a dead engine in the middle of the sea. As part of the survey, you must have the survey expert take it on a sea trial and have the person send you video of the boat on the sea trial to make sure it actually was done. The sea trial was actually very telling, not just to test the boat, but to see how the seller treats your surveyor. It prepares you for the people you are going to be dealing with when you go to sign the papers. What was very clear is used boat dealers don't make their money on used boats, unlike used cars. They have to do this in order to convince the boat purchasers to trade in their boat for a new one. For private owners, of course, this will be different. To keep things positive, I will limit the details of many of the interactions. What I will say is that I will never purchase a boat from this company again. Now look at the survey. Ours showed minor issues, no hull damage or serious corrosion, there are facilities that allow you to see whether a boat had been damaged from an insurance claim. We did not do that based on what we heard from AJ. If you're satisfied, then deal with the trailer, as you will need a trailer unless the boat is really big. In Florida, few people have trailers and finding one due to COVID is nearly impossible. As I said, we checked the, all the way up to Alabama and Georgia and had no luck finding a used trailer. We had to have a trailer made. This is your next hidden cost. We got quotes from a Magic Tilt dealer in Sarasota and a Continental dealer in Key Largo. This would prove to be very valuable later on. So if you have to buy a new trailer, get quotes. So the next step is to fly to the dealer and see the boat. Flights to Miami are not high, but hotels near the coast are nuts. 
We could not find anything less than $500 in a night in the Keys. So we booked a place in Homestead, off to the Keys. Just a heads up, we booked an Airbnb in Homestead. Staying in Homestead has its drawbacks. The bass plays taps every day, the Star Spangled Banner, and other military favorites. Planes also fly overhead constantly during the day. So you may want to find another place to stay. Airbnb was the best deal. Less expensive than a hotel for sure. The next morning, found us going over the bridge into Key Largo on our way to Tavernier. If you get a chance, visit the Diving Museum in Isla Morada. A lot of great history and old diving equipment is there. Now I want to warn you that dealing with used boat dealers is like dealing with pirates, or more specifically, oceanic white tip sharks. They hang out in the blue water. Seldom does food come along, but when it does, it's an all-on attack. We arrived at the boat dealer in Tavernier and were greeted immediately by the used boat salesman. Hey guys, this is Rich. I'm in Tavernier, Florida, and um, we're looking at a new boat to replace the Honeybee. And the reason is we want to have something with more room um, we want to have a head on the boat because we want to be able to travel across to some of the other islands here in the Southern Caribbean. Uh, we wanted two engines in case one happens to fail and we wanted to have easy access at the dive ladder. Has a um, has two Yamaha 250 engines uh, on it, 250 horsepower each, um, and a great ladder to get in and out. The, the Worldcats are really well made. I um, mean, if you just look at the back door, you know, I see a lot of the doors on these boats, they're, they're paper, th almost like paper thin. This thing is built like a tank. The stainless steel is really high quality on this boat. It's got a lot of nice features. It's got a second helm uh, up top. So we can, hopefully we can do some filming up top. I didn't plan on that, but it's an extra bonus. And also it has power assist on the boat. Like I said, it's got a head. It's got, uh, it has the older uh, Yamaha command consoles in it. Um, we can eventually will will uh, upgrade engines in, in a few years, but it only has 400 hours on it, so it's it's really in good shape. Today I'm taking a look to see whether we can actually uh, mount additional uh, tank racks underneath these um, these pads here on the side. In the back, we already have a couple on each side, but you know, four tanks is never enough for people to dive a lot. So um, I'm hoping we can squeeze in uh, another. Uh, eight tanks, uh, one of those four tank holders here on the side. Um, they would be pretty much out of the way, would have room for people to get changed and set up. Uh, at some point I'll probably put something like the sea deck we had uh, on our last boat. I don't know if I use sea deck again or not, That's a, we'll, we'll have to decide on that uh, down the road, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's got a lot of possibilities here, so we're, we're quite uh, excited about it. In any case, it is definitely uh, a bigger boat, and I said it's a 290 DC, it's a dual console, and it's 29 feet long. Our, the Honey Bee is 24 feet long. It's also about a foot wider than the Honey Bee, and you really can notice that on the boat here. So, it's also efficient. So you can see here there's plenty of places to sit in the back here. If you want to sit, you can put your feet down in, uh, on this area. Um, there's also a big seating area in the front. Um, and in the back here, we actually have places where we can put a barbecue on the back and, and hook it up so that, um, you know, we can, we can have cookouts here on the boat. And I also got to figure out, you know, what do we do with camera gear and other things so that it's just more efficient. But it really is a, an incredible boat, very well laid out. 20 years newer, they thought of a lot of different things. You know, one of the great things here is they got a lot of storage areas in here for you can put things. Water fuel separator. Uh, filters are with easy access in the, in the honeybee I basically had to open up a lip and, and basically hang out into the uh, into the bilge to change something like that here we don't have to uh, it's got power assist steering looking at the back of the boat here these couple of lights we're gonna have to replace these we have a 6,000 lumen light on the honeybee I don't know whether that's gonna be just too bright when we're coming up the ladder at night you have them two 6,000 lumen lights might be a little bit much to ask for people coming up the ladder, so I have to think about that. Um, coming over here on the side, let's see. Yep, it definitely needs to have three tires on this thing. 
it's a heavy boat. Anti-fouling on there, just a little bit of paint will do that. Um, but it's really easy, it's got a nice windlass on the front here, and uh, really the boat's in incredible shape. Really, really nice. So everything looked great, but then the used boat salesman stepped onto the boat, and the oceanic white tip began its feeding frenzy. Be prepared from some of these lovely possibilities, such as asking a much higher price for your trailer, moving the date closer up to close, refusing to let you take the boat on a sea trail as they already let the surveyor do it, and getting you to use their service department. Pirates get commissions. In general, their service departments have skeleton crews almost never showing up for work, and given the tight used boat market, they feel they are doing you a favor if they sell you a bo the boat. AG confirmed that they make very little money off used boats and they take up space on their property, so they want them gone. Also, you just spent a lot of money making the trip. They know you are committed. Now, to be fair, they don't know you from a hole in the wall. You are exporting the boat overseas and they know very little about you. Also, I want to share with you island mentality. Our boat was purchased in Florida, in the Florida Keys. Getting angry will only make things worse. You won't win the battle and definitely not the war. You are an outsider and they have probably heard legions of used boat buyers complain. They don't care. Smile, be polite, and be patient. Be logical and methodical. Keep your mind on the end game. Getting the boat. It is good to have a line of credit if you're waiting on cash from the sale of something else. Remember, if you miss the closing date, you lose your deposit. It is only a short-term line of credit. Should you need it, but there are costs associated with applying for one. Get the contract signed, go back to your hotel and start making lists of what you need done and arrange for a wire transfer payment. You also need to insure your boat while it's in Florida. They will need a Florida address and we gave them our E-Zone mailing address in Miami, which is a mail forwarding company. The insurance agent was happy. You should get full coverage on the boat, but pay month by month. It only took us a month to do the work we needed in Florida and get it to the port, at which point cancel the U.S. boat insurance. Once it passes customs, it is no longer in the U.S. and your insurance company won't cover the boat. Your bills of sale should have the year, make, model, and serial numbers of your engines. You must also have the hull number of your boat and you should know it is stamped on the hull. Ours was under the anti-fouling on the transom starboard side and it had to be rubbed off for customs to verify that you were not illegally shipping items that did not belong to you. Your U.S. and Bonaire insurance companies will also need this information. Hourly prices for work in the Keys is high but the parts are less costly as they don't need to be shipped to the island. Also remember the service departments are not there to provide any significant service. Our fly in the ointment was the tower. Even when folded down, it exceeded the maximum height limit on Florida roads, which was 13 feet 6 inches. It had to come down completely. Weeks later, they refused to take it down at all. You must have a backup plan. That would be AJ in Keys Mobile Marine. Take your work list and divide it into the work that needs to be done more easily and less costly with shipping in Florida and what parts can be done on the island. Labor rates are half what they are in Florida, but shipping costs are off the charts for parts. AJ had a crack organization of guys that could do all the work wanted and far better than the boat sellers service departments. His hourly rates were more reasonable and he was completely fair and professional. He received discounts on things like chart plotters and passed the savings off to us. Now keep in mind that you also need to be laid back and professional. AJ is in high demand. AJ is also a tech diving instructor and so he is a great person to bounce ideas off of. AJ also has a big truck. He ended up taking the tower down and did an amazing job securing the boat for shipping and taking it to the port, which includes getting it professionally wrapped in plastic. The best thing I did was give him a list of things to do. Keep in mind, we've owned boats in Bonaire for five years and done some of the service work ourselves, so the list was very detailed. Communication is key and AJ loved the list. In fact, 
Nobody had ever given him a comprehensive list in the past. The second list was work to be done in Bonaire. The parts could easily be gotten from the local Yamaha dealer and things like putting in scuba tank, roll controls, transducers, servicing the engines, tuna tower replacement were all things they have done in the past with ease. ABC Marine also has a great relationship with customs, the local shipping companies, and power company and will haul a boat off the container ship to the shipping company for inspection uh, by customs. You may need to drop some power lines if your boat is too high, such as if you were shipping a sailboat. Ours was not. You need to meet with the local engine dealer, give them the serial numbers off the boat, get the boat in their system, and order the parts needed. Building a good working relationship with your local engine parts supplier on the island is key and we've had that with the local Yamaha dealer. You want parts ready when you arrive such as spark plugs, oil, gear load, timing belts and so on. As for the trailer, we ended up buying a Magic Tilt through the used boat dealer. Having the price quotes proved to be good leverage as they wanted $1,500 more for the same Magic Tilt trailer. Making matters worse, the trailer ended up being three weeks late due to supply chain issues. You will also need to pay for a registration for the trailer as it will be traveling on Florida roads and must be registered. This was a $375 item. When we did pick up the boat, they had not even applied for the temporary plate even though we had paid for the registration. They claimed it was because they needed a Florida address. We gave them the E-Zone address and picked up a temporary plate a few days later. Rather exhausted from the experience, I took the time to have lunch at a Florida dock and watch the manatees take a leisurely drink. They remind me of our cats. Oh, look at them drinking the water out of the... Yeah, they love that. It's real. Wow. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> Rolls over. Let's talk about the work done in Florida after you have paid for the boat and it was on the new trailer. You may not want to do this, but I made a second trip back to Florida to make sure there were no issues picking up the boat, to meet AJ and to be able to discuss any final items. There were issues picking up the boat. The salesperson had left for vacation and we had to hunt to find the original title and bill of sale. AJ picked her up and I followed the boat over to Tavernier Creek Marina. We discussed strengthening the ladder for the tech diving equipment. A horizontal or some kind of curved piece in here. The more triangles we could add, the more curves you could add, yeah. the, the stronger the whole thing is going to be. An additional bracket at the top, support that as high as you can at the top. Okay. That'll take out a lot of the flex. Okay. And that way when and and this then, moves, yeah. you're, you're, instead of it just flexing this long piece, yeah. you're trying to flex this monolithic structure that you've created here. Okay. And then I'd say from here, as far out as you can, and as far down as you can, so as not to be in the water and to not interfere with that on either side. Okay. Um, and I think that'll make it pretty rock solid. So maybe the first year we don't have, well, we won't have that, but uh, the next year we can Let's do just it. see how this feels. Yeah, I mean, that's a, hmm? that's a good angle. Yeah. I like the angle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See a bracket up here goes a long way. Bracket up at the top of yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would and stop it from that's now supporting on the it's grabbing onto the transom a little bit more. Okay. A couple days later I came back to see the progress. The new chart pliers were hooked up, the seacocks were replaced, the horn was corroded, so I had them replace the windshield wiper and another uh, live well shock. Now let's talk about shipping. Make contact with the shipping company, Amcar Freight, and make sure they loop in the receiving company, Road Cargo, in Bonaire. Communication is key. 
make sure they give you the exact location of where the person hauling your boat needs to drop off the boat and they must provide you with a booking number to give to the person hauling your boat to port. This identifies the boat as yours. He needs to show this and the dock receipt at the gate. The shipping company needs a copy of the boat title and bill of sale as well as an EIN number for U.S. Customs. The EIN number is a way of identifying you as a U.S. citizen without giving them your social security number. Make sure the people selling you the boat give you the signed over title and bill of sale. The bills of sale are used to calculate your import duties in Bonaire. Bonaire's import duties on the boat and trailer are 8%. To prepare the boat for shipping internationally, you need to drain all the fuel tanks down to one quarter of their capacity, disconnect the batteries, and secure everything. We had to take the tower completely down and secure the parts. We also put wood 2x4s between the engines so they would not bang against the hull. We also strapped the back of the boat down to secure it. You also need to wrap the boat in plastic. Make sure you hire someone who does this professionally. Your boat will be sitting on a container ship, potentially in strong winds and sea spray for a couple of weeks. It also shows customs that the boat is sealed. AJ handled this by hiring a company that does this in Miami. Once the boat has been delivered to the port, you need to contact the shipping company for the cost, which will include Bonaire import duties. The shipping cost is based on the max width, length, and height of the boat with the trailer, essentially a rectangular box. You can ask for quotes, but at the end of the day, there's only one freight company that will ship your boat to Bonaire, and freight costs change constantly due to the prices of fuel. It is not inexpensive. They will put the boat and trailer on a platform. It will be lifted by crane on and off the main cargo carrier. Bonaire has no cranes at this time, so the boat must first go to Curacao, where it is lifted off the main cargo ship and rolled onto a Don Andreas ship, where it can be taken to Bonaire and rolled off by the company you chose to take it off the boat. We used ABC Marine. The lack of a container crane on Bonaire is why all shipments must go through Curacao. It comes at a considerable cost to Bonaire residents as you have to pay an additional shipping and storage charges. So let's assume the boat's on its way. What do you do in the meantime? You need to get boat insurance in Bonaire. There are a number of companies that do this. Guardian and Nagico insure boats. We use Nagico. All their correspondence is in English and they let you know well ahead of time when you need to renew. You need to order any parts you plan to purchase on the island. You must reserve a dock slip unless your boat is small and you can afford to trailer the boat in and out whenever you want to go diving. We actually reserved a slip when we knew we were buying the boat. Dock space is limited. We only trailer the boat when we need to take the boat out for service. We dive too much. You will need to register your boat with the Harbor Master. I think the fee was $15. You need to arrange for someone to pick up your boat and take it to row cargo for customs inspection. And you will need to, the same company to take the boat to where you are going to have any work done. You need to have someone make decals for the boat that include the boat name and boat registration number. You will not be given a boat registration number without customs clearance forms, which you will receive from row cargo. The receiver in the island. In Bonaire, multiple boats can have the same name, so don't waste your time worrying if someone else has the same boat name already. A small item that could be another fly in the ointment is paying for the shipping upon clearing customs. Shipping costs are so high it is likely you can't do it all in one bank transfer due to bank transfer limits on a per day basis, and that's $25,000 per day. Um, through the MCB bank, for example. We sent part of the money to ABC Marine. We kept the other half. When it was time to pay for the shipping, we just transferred the total amount between both of us to the receiving company on the same day. So we talked about boat servicing. You also need dock lines, mooring lines uh, at the front of the boat that will go through Bonaire mooring loops and attach 
at either end on boat cleats. You also need a backup line that will extend from the front of the boat down to the mooring block that is adequate for your boat. We use the yellow floating line thick enough to support the boat. You also need fenders and lines to attach the fenders, a weighted down line for people to do a safety stop, and a painter line and float at the back of the boat should you miss the boat due to current. Now we wait for the boat. This is the boat at the pier. Lots of security here. We walked right onto the pier. This is one air. What really touched our hearts was a lot of local friends went out to check her out and gave us updates as to when she was moved to row cargo for customs inspection. The Bonaire Marine Center also spliced cleat loops at the end of our lines at no charge. We managed to clear customs and ABC Marine took our boat to be worked on while we headed off to our son's wedding. Just when you think there can be no more problems, a potential tropical storm or hurricane was headed towards Bonaire while we were gone. Here's the Honey Bee 2 cured for the storm thanks to our neighbor Jason Bradley. ABC Marine had to secure our new boat for a potential hurricane along with all the other boats in their yard. Fortunately, it ended up being nothing. Let's go see the boat. We are driving on the road to Rincon to get to ABC Marine. We passed the old World War II U.S. military camp at Tonki, Maraca, and turned left at the sign for the Botanical Gardens. We head down this old dirt road in the Tres Montaña area of Bonaire. A set of metal gates open up to reveal a boatyard. This is the home and boatyard of Ludi and Sandra Franz. This is ABC Marine. Coming up is the new boat Odyssey. Coincidentally, our first boat, the Honeybee, is sitting right near her. It is a 17 foot Aquanati. We have come a long way. The Honeybee 2 is also here being prepped for sale. Great. We're at the ABC Marine Boat Yard, and we're about ready to do a walkthrough on the new boat. In Florida, we added uh, two of these uh, underwater lights. Instead of being on the bottom in the old, uh, in the honeybee, we put them on the back here, and we think it'll be spreading out over the surface more. These are 2,000 lumens each instead of a one big 6,000 lumen, and part of that has to do with, you know, if we're going to go up uh, into the boat, uh, we don't want to uh, have that light really blasting this with 6,000 lumens of light. So it's, it's a little bit more uh, easy on the eyes. Okay, and so we have this fantastic ladder that comes on these red cats. And, uh, you know, you got a platform. You can basically walk down the ladder. Oh, it's got handrails. Oh, getting cool. Okay, we're probably going to beef up this, this ladder here and uh, probably add some more support and, uh, both below and up. And that is basically for a tech gear, which is a lot heavier. So we've taken these um, padding that we've had here and we've actually made it smaller so that we can fit extra tanks over here on each side. There is. We have a new Garmin system here. Uh, we've basically taken uh, the Yamaha gauges and routed them into the Garmin display. And also we have uh, another Garmin display up on the tower that will basically take all the transducer information and route it over there on the NEMA 2000 bus. We have a real head in the boat, which is great. Got plenty of headroom. Also, uh, you have, uh, we have a windlass up here. We've got storage up in the front. Um, you know, I like this because you can walk up and down the center, which is very easy. Uh, we got the tower up here so we can see uh, fish getting hit on the water by larger fish and we can go in and film them. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what other, some of the other things that we've added to this. Well, we had to fix the stereo system. That was pretty much uh, shot. The, the, the radio didn't work and, and all the speakers uh, from the salt air or been sitting there basically just became 
very, very hard and inflexible, so they didn't work. Um, I'm not going to go through all the, the features of this particular boat. If you want to go look out at a WorldCat 290 DC, you can. But this is really a great boat for scuba diving. Um, so over here, you basically can sit on the edge here and put your tank on. It's very easy. It's not, not, not hard to do that at all. You put your tanks in the side. So we got four and then eight. And then you have um, four more in the back. So there's a total of 12 tanks. And uh, we think this will be adequate for what we're doing. I know you think 12 tanks is a huge number, but when, you, when you're going out with friends, Let's head up to the tower. I can only imagine this view on the water. Tomorrow is launch day. In the distance, Odyssey is being lowered by crane near the entrance to the Plaza Resort Channel. Ludi Franz of ABC Marine uses a line to control the front of the boat. Hey, Ludi. The top was left down to facilitate transport. Ludi, that looks way bigger than the honeybee now. Wow. The stamoid top is not quite done as the seamstress got COVID. Sadly, that is also why Doreen is not here. Our good friend Elaine Hoffman, a Bonaire resident, is filming for us. We wave goodbye to Ludi and ABC Marine. Rich, yeah. look at me. You look tiny. <laughs> oh, you look tiny. Oh, this, this ride's like glass. We pass the green marker boy. The two engines easily push the boat along. Ahead, the blue Caribbean Sea opens up before us. Time to fuel up. Ouch! Elaine takes over the controls. A former container ship captain. I think he can handle it. Time to take her home. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and hit the subscribe button and the bell. It goes a long way to supporting this channel and helps you to know when new content is released. Thank you for watching.